Here we are in the middle of August and friends, I've had a lot of people asking me if we should still be spraying fish emulsion and the answer is yes and I'm gonna tell you why. So, but first and foremost, I just wanna give a general backdrop about fertility. There's a lot of approaches to fertility and yes, fertility is the foundation of soil health, which is the foundation of plant health, which is the foundation of human health and the health of this planet. <laughs> so yes, fertility, keep asking questions. It's a really big question and a, probably the most important question we could possibly ask with our lives. So right from the top, there's a lot of different options in the realm of fertility. Certainly compost is amazing and there's cover cropping, lots of different options. But here's kind of the two sides to the coin that are really easy and really really accessible. So there is the long-term slow release organic granular fertilizer that we have paired with fish emulsion and those two things no matter what soil you have no matter where you are they're going to give you so much more abundance without question. So I'll talk about our granular um, our granular fertilizer in another in another more extensive video. But basically, it's a granular version of there with over a hundred micro and macronutrients, and we put it on at the beginning of the season slash anytime we're really tilling and working soil. We put this on, and that is going to feed soil as well as feeding our crops. So that is an incredible gift that you can give yourself and to all the other plants in your world. So, but there's also fish emulsion, which fish emulsion is this extraordinary creature that I'm excited to tell you about friends because we're continuing to feed with fish emulsion every week now till frost. And we have since the very beginning, even we've fed our little seedlings in spring. This is our gardener sweetheart tomato, by the way. And if we want to, get, if we want to inspire it to keep growing, yes, there are fungal diseases that you can't do a whole lot about, but if they, your plants are healthy, if they're sleeping well, <laughs> if I'm sleeping well, I'm a lot healthier. But if we all are eating really good nutritious food, all of a sudden we're less susceptible to disease. So this same is true for your plants, friends. So this fish emulsion is pretty remarkable. Every 10 days, two weeks is a good sh thing to shoot for. We go for every week, but then we're kind of knocking it out of the park and it's our job. So, but here's the thing. This is a liquid. Perhaps you can hear it. It is a really thick liquid. It is a very viscous and rather stinky liquid. Yes, and it's brown, and it is fish as well as kelp, and so there are over a hundred micro and macronutrients in this as well. Instant fertility for your garden. And so here's the thing. You want to dilute it. One ounce goes of this fish emulsion goes into a gallon of water. So a little goes a long way, and you don't want to overdo it because that's when raccoons and other things say, yes, bring me to the fish. So you definitely want to respect that one ounce to one gallon ratio. And then you've got two options. You can either foliar feed them uh, by spraying these, this dilute fish emulsion directly on the leaves, or you can drench them. I'll tell you a little bit about both. So if you're going to spray them, I highly recommend that you do because here's the fun fact. Plants uptake nutrients not only from their roots, they uptake them from their leaves themselves. And so if you especially are starting to see some yellowing on leaves, or like I can tell some of the purpling on this tomato, it's starting to get a little deficient in magnesium. So if you can put that fertility straight onto a leaf, all of a sudden it's right where it needs to go and that plant is going to uptake it, be that much more happy, that much more productive, that much more abundant, that much more quickly. So find yourself a bottle. And we also have a great big backpack sprayer, but we even have this little thing. My sister actually gave me this too. <laughs> Missed our air plants. Thanks, Greta. Um, but if you have, whatever you have, just label it fish emulsion. Because once you use it for fish emulsion once, you've kind of committed it. It's gonna smell like fish emulsion for the rest of its days, um, which isn't the worst because it's such a beautiful gift to give yourself and all the plants in your life. But you'll be that much happier if you label it. So yes, label it. And you also, so when you're feeding that, when you're foliar feeding your plants, make sure that you're out there first thing in the morning. Certainly after like 10, 11 o'clock, especially if it's a really warm day with that sunlight coming through, like sun coming down and pretty harsh, it's going to take those minute water droplets full of fish emulsion 
and it's going to use it as a magnifying glass and just kind of toast, sunburn your leaves. So it's really important that you do it first thing in the morning. And then you also, if you don't want to pull your feed, I don't blame you. It's really fun, but it can be quite a bit of work. Um, and the timing is everything. So you can also put it in a watering can and use it as a root drench. So same exact ratio, one ounce to one gallon, one ounce of that fish emulsion to one gallon of water. And then you'll simply pour it on the roots of the plants, it's called a root drench. And so with each of, when we send out the fish emulsion from our website, we actually send this whole sheet of paper so you know exactly you know how we do it both where to how often to feed where to feed if if you're spraying it if you're using a root drench tons of info on this sheet so it's also available as just a download so you can get it from our website um, send me your email with that little opt-in and I will send it straight to your inbox friends um, but yeah these are all so many tools that you have in your life to bring greater abundance greater beauty greater nutrient density to your lives so another tip I don't just feed absolutely everything all the time. As soon as we have seed crops that are starting to mature, dry down, we stop feeding one month prior. Also, I'm slipping out of my pockets. We love growing garlic and onions and shallots and something like these. They go dormant well before <laughs> the frost comes. So if we stop feeding these about a month before they mature, so in the case of garlic and shallots, kind of the end of June, we absolutely stop giving them any extra fertility. And that's because we don't want to be inspiring them to continue to vegetatively grow. We want them to fully go into dormancy and that way they'll fully cure. We're pretty invested eating these garlic and shallots all through the winter. <laughs> so if we kept feeding them, they would continue to grow, but that would significantly decrease their storage life. Um, this is our Italy hill, by the way. It's a massive porcelain um, that is just so delicious. It's kind of my favorite for pesto right now. And this is our Dutch red. They're just massive and they last all winter long and they're super sweet. Um, so yes, there are definitely exceptions to feeding all the time and you're looking at them. If something wants to go dormant, let it go dormant. Stop feeding it a month prior, but other than that, like these tomatoes, I want them to keep growing and keep being super productive. So I'm gonna keep eating them and I'm gonna keep feeding them. I'm going to keep feeding them our fish emulsion. And I'm so honored to share these seeds, these tools, this knowledge. I hope I'm inspiring you to go out and eat more, sow more seeds. And don't be shy. If you have questions, you know where to find me. I'm Petra here at Fruition Seeds, signing off. Until next time, adieu.